It's the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia, with your host, Bob Snap. Hi guys, and welcome to the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get started, I want to apologize for yesterday. Uh, a couple of people let me know that I did a mess up on yesterday's video of uh, Sue Ann Langdon, who played Mary uh, uh, on the Andy Griffith Show, is actually still alive. It was her husband that died in 2010, so my apologies. Um, well, let's get on to today's video. Today's video is, you remember the woman prisoner played by Susan Oliver? Well, we're going to do a little bit on her, actually a whole lot on her, so we better get started because it's going to be a long one. You ready? Here we go. Uh, did you know that besides being a standout television actress, Susan Oliver survived a plane crash, set aerial records, and won a transcontinental plane race? It's true. You may recognize her uh, for her role on the Andy Griffith Show as uh, the woman prisoner or as the beautiful green girl from Star Trek. Uh, a little bit on her life. Her real name was Charlotte Girk, and she was born in New York City on February 13, 1932. Her parents had divorced when she was only three. She grew up living with her dad. Uh, he was a journalist from the New York world. And he traveled to some pretty cool places for his job. In 1948, uh, she studied in Japan while he worked there at the Tokyo International College. It was this experience that inspired a short film that she directed, but I'll tell you more on that later. Uh, in 49, she moved to California to be with her mother, well-known Hollywood hypnotist. Uh, Charlotte decided that she wanted to be an actress, took the stage name Susan Oliver. Oliver was her mother's maiden name. Susan Oliver uh, enrolled in school to become an actress, turning back to the East Coast to study at Swarthmore uh, College, and she completed some uh, professional training at the Neighborhood Playhouse School at the Theater in New York City. Now, she was uh, with her high cheekbones and rosebud lips was prominent in the film and TV for three decades. Her first television role was in 1955 on the live drama series Goodyear TV Playhouse quickly appeared on some 50 staples like Father Knows Best, uh, The Andy Griffith Show, Bonanza. Our film debut was in 1957, independent drama The Green-Eyed Blonde, as the title character known as Green Eyes. Uh, this was the only film that Oliver received top billing for, but the ironic thing is that Susan would become pretty well known for her remarkable blue eye, trademark blue eyes. Movie magic. Uh, she guest starred on Wagon Train four times, twice in 60, once along with Leonard Nimoy as an American Indian. This was her bread and butter, one-off episodes on all the great shows, such as the Andy Griffith Show. Standout guest star that could do it all. Her main draw was her versatility and likability. The show needed a blonde guest star. Susan was among the first considerations for the job. She tried to champion her own series a few times. One pilot for a new series called Apartment in Rome just didn't sell. Other notable appearances are two episodes of Clint Eastwood's Rawhide, three episodes in the very popular Route 66, and then the double parter of The Fugitive in 63. 64, she had three more film chances. First co-starring with Charles Bronson in Western Guns of Diablo, uh, and then a little more lighthearted as a destitute patient alongside the slapstick god Jerry Lewis in The Disorderly Orderly. This relationship is super innocent and showcases Lewis in peak form. Uh, give it a watch. And finally, she played uh, Audrey Williams, the wife of country music legend Hank Williams and your cheating heart. Her TV career was still motoring, too. And in 1966, she joined the primetime soap opera Peyton Place for 49 episodes as Ann Howard. But she was about to dance herself out of the stratosphere. No longer a green eyed blonde. She's going all green. And I'm not talking the Hulk. 
Her most iconic role came in 64 on the very first pilot episode of the brand new sci-fi show Star Trek. She played Vina, and although she was about to go on vacation and had no prior experience in dance, uh, studio executive Oscar Katz got his girl, painted her green, taught her how to dance, together created an unforgettable look. Many people refer to her as the green girl. An image of Susan Oliver's Vina was often used in the end credits of the Star Trek, earning her a special place in the hearts of Trekkies everywhere. So prominent that a 2014 documentary about Susan Oliver's life was called The Green Girl. Susan always wanted to bring her Star Trek experience full circle and direct an episode of the second uh, iteration, Star Trek The Next Generation, but she was not given the chance, the reason being her limited experience with visual effects despite the fact that a knowledge of visual effects was not a director's requirement for the series. Uh, she had been working as a director since the previously mentioned 78 short film that she wrote based on her time in Japan called Cowboy San. Oliver had an obsession with the American influence on Japanese culture that can be traced back to her time spent in Japan with her father. She was a member of the first class of the American Film Institute directing workshop for women. Uh, or the DWW, uh, supposedly. She supplied a significant amount of funding for them. She directed the first episode of the final season of MASH, titled Hey, Look Up Me Over, and followed that with her final directing endeavor, a season five uh, episode of Trapper John M.D. Susan Oliver's final acting appearance was in an episode of Wes Craven's anthology, Freddy's Nightmares, in 1988. She received her only Emmy Award nomination in 76 for a three-hour-long made-for-TV movie, Amelia Earhart. Uh, now, this brings us to her uh, aviation uh, experience. We'll start with the fear that she had to overcome back in the skies. It's in February of 59, coincidentally, the same day that Buddy Holly and company crashed in Iowa. But Susan Oliver was relaxing in her seat. Uh, when her transatlantic Boeing 707 suddenly dropped from 35,000 feet to 6,000 feet in a matter of seconds. The plane was able to make a safe landing, but Susan was scarred and avoided flying for a year. Her career suffered. She would only take roles that she could travel to via land. Finally, she underwent hypnosis to treat her fear of flying. In the summer of 64, local L.A. News anchor Hal Fishman took her on a flight in his Cessna 172, and she loved it so much and she returned to the air for, air, airfield the next day to begin pursuing her own pilot's license. Now, then in 1966, while training for her own transatlantic flight, she was a passenger in a plane when the pilot apparently started showboating, hit some wires, flipped the plane. Fortunately, both Susan and the pilot survived without injury, and she never flew again. <laughs> nah, just kidding. In 67, Susan Oliver became only the fourth woman to fly a single-engine plane across the Atlantic Ocean by herself. She landed her plane in Denmark after her original destination of Moscow denied her airspace. Uh, she chronicled her adventures in her 1983 autobiography titled Odyssey, a daring transatlantic uh, journey. By 1968, she had obtained her commercial pilot license for single- and multi-engine planes. She was even named Pilot of the Year for her winning performance in the Powder Puff Derby in 1970, an impressive victory in nearly 3,000-mile transcontinental race, from a near crash to a survivor of one, to Pilot of the Year, truly astonishing determination and bravery. Sadly, she was a longtime smoker and was diagnosed with cancer and passed away at the Motion Picture and Television Hospital in, Hall in Woodland Hills, California, at the age of 58. A much too early death for such a determined woman and wonderful talent. Altogether, Susan Oliver appeared in more than 100 television programs. Um, and one of those being on the Andy Griffith Show. There you go. I know this one's a bit long, too, but I thought this was really interesting. Uh, you think some of these people are one off. And she actually did quite a lot and, I, and went on to, uh, to fly. Uh, especially after that, uh, what an amazing woman she was. Uh, that's all I have for you. Um, please don't forget about classic rock and country music facts and trivia. Head on over there. Please subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, have a great day. God bless you. And I'll be praying for you.